The U.S. Air Force is planning to buy two Mach transporter erector launchers, or TELs. The Machs are designed to mimic the physical look as well as radar and other signatures of Russia's S-300 PMU-1 and two air defense systems. The Air Force is expected to place it in the Utah Test and Training Range, or UTTR, so they can be used for training exercises. U.S. military faces challenges from many weapons, but only a few of these are thought to be threatening enough to need extensive training to counter. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the U.S. Air Force wants to buy life-size mock of Russian S-300 air defense system. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Air Force Material Command AFMC, states it expects to issue a formal proposal to buy the High Fidelity SA-20 Transporter Erector Launcher TEL surrogates later in September 2019. SA-20 is a designation the U.S. military and NATO uses to cover both S-300 PMU-1 and 2. Actually, SA-20A and SA-20B is referred to as S-300 PMU-1 and 2, respectively. Viewers may note that on August 29, 2019, it had first announced its intention to buy the TELs. AFMC's contracting announcement stated, High fidelity surrogates are necessary to provide training of cognitive skills to live air crews. New advancements in technology require these surrogates to be signature accurate to assist in training. As per Air Force, it's interested in mock tells that will not only have a radar cross section RCS, of the real one, but also be able to replicate the electro optical and infrared signatures. The planned purchase may be related to the U.S. military's acquisition of at least two mobile radars from Ukraine in the past year or so that may be related to the S-300. The S-300 is a Russian long-range air defense system produced by NPO Almaz. The system was first deployed by the Soviet Union in 1979. Since then, many variants of the system have been produced. S-300 is considered to be one of the most lethal operational air defense systems in the world. Russia has already deployed its S-400, which is an upgrade of this, and is working on S-500. The system is designed to protect important areas like military bases, administrative buildings against aerial threats like jet fighters, bomber aircraft, cruise missiles, and drones. The P in S-300 refers to mobile variant. PMU-2 means mobile modified and second upgrade. Viewers may note that S-300 PMU-3 is renamed as S-400. S-300 is an anti-access aerial denial a 2 a D system and is capable of defending large swaths of land area from air attack. The surveillance radar of S-300 tracks objects over a range of 300 kilometers or around 185 miles. The system's engagement radar can guide up to 12 missiles simultaneously and is highly resistant to jamming through electronic warfare. It must be noted that S-300 has additional target acquisition radars. 67 N6 Gamma D and 9 N6 Prativnik G radars in L band, Nebo SVU in the very high frequency band, and Nebo M and Zebu M in multi band to aid the main radar. S300 has immense firepower at its disposal. 
A full battalion includes six launcher vehicles, with each vehicle containing four missile containers for a total of 24 missiles, as well as command and control and long-range radar detection vehicles. The system can engage up to six targets at once. S-300 deploys multiple missiles to cover their engagement envelope. Here are the missiles. 1. Short-range 9M96E, 40 kilometers or 25 miles, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets, having a speed of up to Mach 2.6. 2. Medium-range 9M96E2, 120 kilometers or 75 miles, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets, having a speed of up to Mach 3. 3. Long range 48N6, 250 kilometers or 155 miles, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets having a speed of up to Mach 14. There are five reasons that make the S 300 a threat for any Air Force. One, the missiles deployed by S-300, like 40N-6 and 9M-96E-1, are not only guided by the system but also have active radar homing ARH, capabilities. So these missiles are guided to the target by radars of S-300 in the initial stage, but when they reach near, they can maneuver on their own. This makes the missiles very agile and hard to shrug off. Two, Some of the radars in S-300 are thought to be capable of detecting even stealthy aircraft, making it effective against fifth-generation fighters and bombers. 3. S-300 has many features specifically designed to overcome electronic warfare EW. For example, the very powerful radar is resistant to jamming due to its ability to change frequency of its signals very rapidly. It is also equipped with Topaz Colchuga M, KRTP-91 Tamara, and 85V6 Orion Vega emitter locating systems, and these components are designed to engage emitting targets without emitting from the acquisition radars. 4. The 250 km or 155 miles strike range makes it very hard for a rival to destroy it through standoff strike. It is also to be noted that S-300 is a highly modular system. For example, the radar can be used independently of the missiles for command and control purposes. So just because the radar is there doesn't mean the entire system is there. These aspects make it very unpredictable and difficult to target. 5. S-300 can guide up to 12 missiles simultaneously, engaging up to 6 targets at once. This basically means it is very hard to saturate the S-300 with a barrage of missiles. Overall, it can be said that an area protected by S-300 will be hard to penetrate even by the most capable Air Force, including the U.S. Air Force. Some weapons need special attention, and S-300 is one of them. An important thing to understand is that a system like S-300 can inflict far larger damage to a rival than the cost required to deploy it. A single battalion could wipe off a fighter squadron or even more. Hence, extensive training and strategies need to be developed against a weapon like this. So, buying and training against mock-up of S-300 makes sense, as this will enable the U.S. Air Force to prepare realistically and understand the hazards more clearly. This kind of exercise will help in evolving strategies that will enable the Air Force to counter the S-300 in a real battlefield in the future. This is not the first time the U.S. military is doing this, and it is actually acquired original examples of foreign military equipment in the past. S-300 is a prized asset for Russia, and even a stripped-down version is not likely to be available for sales to the U.S. Also, there are political considerations, like if America buys actual S-300 for training, it will indicate that it is highly concerned about the particular weapon and this could have an adverse impact on sales of American hardware, like fighter jets and air defense systems. So surrogates are more viable, lower cost alternatives, and will draw much less attention from rivals and allies. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.
hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.